Hi, I'm Jim Matthew Sadler. And I'm WIM Natasha Regan. Welcome to this game from the TSEC 18 Super Final between Stockfish and Leela. In this game, uh, Stockfish is white and Leela is black, and it's a Trompowski as popularised by English GM Julian Hodgson. The Trombowski is a regular guest in the TSEC Super Final. And in this, they've got history, Leela and Stockfish. And in Super Final 15, Leela managed to win both games, so for white and black. This year, we saw two draws. And in this game, uh, Stockfish moves only knights and pawns in the opening and does a kingside pawn advance. Leela slows it down uh, with a pawn advance uh, with h5 and that results in, in blocking Stockfish's play but also gives Leela a broken pawn structure. Stockfish then castles behind its own pawns, um, behind its advanced kingside pawns uh, to get a space advantage. And then Leela comes up with a brilliant double pawn sacrifice and the game gets very, very exciting. Okay, let's have a look at the game. So this was the uh, the TSEC opening book position. I'll show you how it happened because uh, actually, if you did, if you hadn't seen this uh, Trompowski before, then uh, uh, it can be slightly hard to imagine how you got uh, precisely to that position. So d4, knight f6, bishop g5, knight e4. And then um, actually this was um, uh, really the big thing that, uh, that Julian uh, introduced with the Trompowski. They always used to play in the good old days, the bishop back to h4. Um, but here um, uh, Ju Julian started playing the bishop to f4 and, uh, uh, and simply saying that, um, uh, well, the knight on e4 will get chased away by, um, chased away by, um, uh, by pawns on f3 and then later e4. So c5, f3, queen a5 check, c3 that queen a5 check gets thrown in to stop a white knight from coming to uh, to c3 knight f6 d5 queen b6 um i think julian played even b3 uh, at some stage but um in the end he opted for um for bishop c1 just defending the uh, the pawn on b2 and after g6 we get e4 which is the uh, the t-sec position um, and, uh, yeah, it's a very interesting uh, position here. I mean, white's got a fundamental choice to make. Um, white can, um, can play the move uh, um, c3 to c4 and transpose back into a, a sameish King's Indian structure. Um, in principle, black's gained a tempo, I think, or it's difficult to, to, uh, to be absolutely sure, but uh, with this move, queen b6. And uh, queen b6 uh, is kind of a mixed blessing. It, um, it attacks b2. So it stops the bishop from developing from uh, um, uh, from c1. On the other hand, um, in you know the, the sort of Benoni uh, type positions that you get, Black's normal play with counterplay is to play b7 to b5. So that queen is is misplaced from that point of view and will have to move again. So queen b6. If you is, move it, then you might lose that extra tempo. Anyway. Well, that's right. So it's kind of a you know a half or a quarter extra tempo really. It's not uh, it's not a full one. Uh, the, the other point, the other idea that White's got, and this is the one that uh, that Leela and uh, Stockfish both go for with White, uh, and very logical, is simply to play a knight to c4. Um, now, when you get a knight to c4, obviously you're attacking the queen on b6. And the other thing that you're doing is um, you're also attacking d6, which makes, um, um, well, black counterplay with e7 to e6, very typical in the uh, modern Benoni. Um, a little bit more um, uh, fraught to achieve because we're uh, we're nicely attacking the uh, the d6 square. We're going to see how that turns out in the uh, in the game. Black needs quite a few tactics to make that sort of thing work. Um, now, as Natasha mentioned uh, in the opening phase, both Leela and Stockfish with White, they um, they only really played with their knights and their pawns, uh, basically putting their knights onto good squares and then um, advancing their kingside pawns. I'm just going to show you just how uh, quickly how the um, the Leela game went, uh, first of all, because it make a nice comparison with how Stockfish did things. It's just uh, really quite uh, quite typical and interesting. So um, here Stockfish played, um, uh, Leela went bishop g7, Stockfish played d6, not a great deal of difference. And here Leela played the move a4, uh, which I thought was quite interesting. I mean, Leela's still aiming to get the knight to a3 to c4, 
But Leela's really opting for the stable approach. So first of all, get a4, get control of the b5 square, and then afterwards move your knight in behind. As we'll see, Stockfish took the risky approach, which is move your knight into c4 first, and then somehow you're going to deal with, uh, with, with b5 later. I thought that was quite, um, quite, uh, quite striking. Um, Stockfish moves the queen back, knight e2, knight c4, knight d7, and then g4. So, uh, and again, this was a plan that Stockfish uh, played in its game as well. Um, simply trying to, um, um, to exploit the fact that Black's counterplay in the, uh, in the center is pretty difficult to achieve. For example, e7 to e6 would just lose the, uh, the d6 pawn. So Black played knight b6, knight g3. Um, yeah, Leela prefers to put the knight on here. We'll see where that Stockfish preferred to put the knight on, uh, on f4. Um, both have got a pretty similar idea that we can just play g5, chase away the knight from f6, and then move the h-pawn up the board. I think I find Leela's approach more intuitive. Yeah, I think so. I think so too. Um, but it's, um, well, we'll see how it, uh, how it all goes. But uh, I, I think the knights, the white's pieces do end up being placed slightly better. Um, so this is a, a nice move as well, avoiding the exchange of, um, of, uh, of knights. Um, and then after um, if d6 to d5, we've got uh, these sort of twin pincer movement uh, attacks. We go g5, and then afterwards the d5 pawn will be uh, will be hanging. So um, uh, that's actually quite uh, quite nice there. So Stockfish actually played a5 to um, uh, to uh, to block that a4 to a5, and then um, Leela started on the uh, on on the kingsider uh, um, attack. Again, just trying to uh, to gain space, but I mean, it's extraordinary, uh, you know, lack of development, really. You know, it's um, it's it's quite amazing, and uh, this is all based on on a tactical point that after um, F G, H G, and Queen and Rook takes F four, White can play Queen D six and fork the Bishop on E six and Rook on F four. So uh, I'll just give a couple more moves: uh, Rook F one, Knight F one, Bishop B three. Stockfish has sacrificed the exchange, but the white king is in the centre. Leela Zero tries to uh, to make some uh, some uh, attack there with knight g4, and then this move bishop e5 was played, which uh, was uh, apparently the whole point of the uh, of Black's defensive manoeuvre, and quite a stunning little one. The idea is if knight e5, we go uh, knight takes e5, and queen e5, queen d1 uh, check is uh, very very dangerous for uh, for White. So um, in the end, in that game, um, we got uh, the move queen d3, queen e7, knight e3, bishop g3 check, and knight e5. And uh, well, the uh, the game continued. I'll just show you actually. Knight f6 takes takes. Knight d3, rook h5, and uh, and this was kind of a balanced uh, middle game. Um, again, very 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 sharp game, which was uh, eventually drawn. But I just wanted to show you it just to uh, show you the. Um, uh, the way that um, uh, that uh, well, you know, Leela played in this position because you'll recognise uh, elements of it um, with um, with Stockfish, but just slightly different. But for Leela, then playing a pawn to a4 first, then the knight to, to c4, and then putting the knight on g3 behind the pawns, and then moving up the uh, the g and h pawns. So okay, that was um, that was a, a very exciting game between um, uh, Leela as white and Stockfish as black. Let's have a look at, uh, at Stockfish Leela. So Leela played bishop g7, knight e2, and then knight a3. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is a more risky dynamic approach. Um, you don't uh, take control of the b5 square first. You're trying to play knight a3 to c4. And you think, well, maybe I won't need this move uh, a4 later. Maybe I can just, um, yeah, just uh, um, do something aggressive instead of uh, playing a restraining move a4. So, uh, and I think this is quite typical. I mean, Stockfish is always, you know, quite dynamic, uh, much more dynamic, I think, than, uh, than Leela. Leela's often looking for, uh, you know, stable pieces and stable advantages. So d6, and then knight to f4. And this is a very interesting uh, placement for the knight. Um, it's a little bit more aggressive than g3, where Leela put it. Um, the knight's um, sort of kind of dissuading black from playing e7 to e6. The knight's also looking at, uh, at g6, you know, and will assist a pawn storm with g4 to g5 and h4 to h5. 
Uh, the one drawback of putting the knight on f4, um, and that's a drawback actually that I've uh, I've played this um, this sort of this sort of uh, position with a knight on f4 and uh, in this type of structure, and the drawback is always uh, exactly what leader plays. After knight d7, you can play the knight to e5, which is a good defensive and attacking uh, square. I mean, defensive it defends the some kingside light squares, attacking it attacks um, uh, f3 and g4. Um, and you can't really drive it away very easily because, um, well, this knight on f4 is stopping white from playing f3 to f4. In the Leela game, Leela had its knight on g3, so knight e5 could always have been met by f3 to f4. So um, uh, Stockfish has to uh, to find a plan. I I'm not 100% sure about what uh, what Stockfish did, although you know it was still still very dangerous. Um, I think, um, I mean, I was kind of interested in moves like knight c4, to be honest. This knight on e5 is so good, this knight on a3 is not great, so why not just exchange it? It does free up black's position a little bit, um, you know, the exchanges, and uh, and black's a little more cramped, but I felt that it wasn't um, a bad idea at all. Um, but Stockfish played h4, which is very reasonable. And now, I mean, I, I would have been looking to play e6, break in the center, you know, I've got pawns rushing towards me. But Leela plays the astonishingly calm move, rook b8. Yeah, that's a move you wouldn't, you wouldn't really think of playing at all, or at least I wouldn't. No, no, I mean, it's just... It to be relevant it, at this point. But, yeah. of course, then I suppose if the queen is going to move, then you're going to want to play b5. Yeah, it's just uh, preparing b5 for a later stage. And um, essentially, Leela isn't too scared about um, um, what Stockfish is doing on the king's side. But, um, but yeah, it's a very, it is, I find it a very, a very odd move indeed. And again, I mean, I wouldn't mind playing um, a knight c4 as, um, as white here, or maybe um, um, a move like, um, like h5, for example. Um, yeah, I mean, um, in my engine games, um, h5 was played quite a bit. Um, and then, uh, for example, queen a5, knight c4, takes, takes, b5, here it comes, bishop e2. But it's not easy for black to create a good counterplay on the queen side, because um, if, um, if you play b4, um, for example, then um, um, I'll simply go c4 and uh, and block it up like that. And then, okay, I mean, uh, maybe the position will get a little bit blocked and uh, it won't be easy to to, uh, to win the game completely for white. But white's got all the play, really, I mean, on the um, uh, on the king side there. So um, um, what were the engines doing? I think uh, queen a4 was also an idea just to try and uh, weaken up the uh, the queen side a bit. But that wasn't, uh, you know, too scary either. In principle, I thought white was, would do quite well from, uh, from this position. Uh, Stockfish plays a very sharp um, idea. Um, it plays the move g5 and um, looks very strong. I mean, it looks like the, the black knight's got to retreat to, um, uh, to e8 or d7 and then white plays h5. Um, but actually, Lila had a completely different idea, which is to go knight h5. Um, knight takes h5, g takes h5. And what's the nice point about this? Well, the nice point about it is, OK, we've got a, um, a rather weakened uh, kingside pawn structure, but um, it's very hard to get at. As soon as you go f4, black can go knight g4, and uh, it's a great square for the knight, and it's also shielding the pawn on h5. I mean, from that point of view, I'd, I also wonder whether if um, white was going to play this g5 idea, um, whether it would have been better to, to play it before playing h4 because then at least you'd still have the possibility of playing h3, stopping the knight coming to g4. So I'm not 100% sure about um, about Stockfish's plan somehow. Um, but, you know... But knight h5 is a clever idea though, isn't it? It's a very nice idea, yeah. And you wouldn't necessarily think of doing that. It's not obvious to do that. No. Uh, because of your kingside pawns. No, it's a very, it's a very, very good idea. I mean, it really is um, uh, an excellent idea. Um, so bishop e2. E6, Leela starts uh, opening up the centre now. Things have got to start uh, happening. You mustn't uh, let yourself get uh, get squashed uh, any more than you are now. Um, F4 and then Knight G4. Um, and here, uh, yeah, Stockfish takes um, um, a radical decision. Well, I mean, actually, with this pawn on H5, Knight on G4, not easy to get um, a kingside pawn storm anymore. Um, you can't win a pawn in this way. Queen takes, there's this move, E takes D5, which is uh, rather annoying. <clears throat> and of course, you know, white doesn't have many pieces on the king's side, so, you know, unlikely to be able to uh, to do anything decisive uh, there now. Um, I mean, I was uh, 
intrigued about this move knight c4, uh, queen c7, and then just uh, taking on e6 and playing queen takes d6. That looked, you know, quite a natural use of uh, the knight on c4. But after queen c8, now the queen slightly awkward on um, on d6. Um, if you were to play uh, something like f5, I'd probably just take take and go knight e5 and then go rook d8, and uh, this queen is really going to get trapped. Um, so what else was I looking at? Oh yeah, queen d3 is possible, but then you start going b5, queen c6. You're threatening rook d8. You're threatening c4. You know, there's just a lot of counterplay for um, for black here. So um, Stockfish decides to go for something completely different, which is uh, taking on e6 and castles kingside. So um, someone in the uh, in the TSEC chat uh, remarked that. Um, well, if you launch a kingside pawnstorm and then castle kingside, it's uh, not normally a good sign. And um, yeah, that's definitely a, a valid comment. Um, I, I think. I'll tell you what, though, that, that H now the H files closed. You might want you might want that rook on the F file. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's that's definitely true. I mean, actually, um, uh, Stockfish is really just um, changing the concept, um, you know, around completely. And um, so, uh, and these, this kingside pawn storm has now turned into something that just gives gives white um, a big space advantage. You know, it's uh, these pawns on e4, f4, g5. They take away a lot of nice squares from uh, from black's position. And if you know you get, got rid of this d pawn, and then you got an e4 to e5, and got a brilliant blockade of this bishop on g7. So it's just um, switching the concept around uh, somehow. And uh, I mean, if you look at black's pieces, apart from knight on g4, which is excellent, of course, um, can be removed by white. Um, um, so always got to watch out for that. You look at the rest of black pieces, bishop on g7, bishop on c8, rook on b8, rook on f8, queen b6. Not really doing that much, you know. So um, it's not as if, um, you know, black's at white's throat. So really, I mean, white's got a, a few moves, you know, to, to consolidate. I mean, probably if you're going to give white a few moves, he probably plays king to g3, you know, just... Uh, get the king uh, closer to its pawns, and then you start playing knight c4, you know, and uh, develop yeah, the bishop. You'd take that d6 pawn, couldn't you? Exactly, exactly. So um, quite, a, quite a, a tricky little um, um, little scenario. And uh, I mean, my, my engine thought that, um, um, you know, that, that white was just, um, uh, had a nice edge in this position. But Leela's plan... Do you, do you know, do you remember if the Leela and Stockfish, who likes their positions? Oh, I can't remember exactly. I think um, uh, Stockfish was quite keen on its position and uh, yeah. Leela was calmer. Although, yes, yeah, it's always tricky to know with these evaluations because they've, um, um, I read that they've uh, kind of suppressed the Leela evaluation a little bit because uh, obviously Leela was always incredibly it's optimistic. Always scaled, isn't it? Yeah, and, uh, and that scale, that conversion from, um, from expected uh, percentage expected score to, uh, to centi pawns is always tough to achieve. So now Leela always seems uh, very pessimistic um, in comparison. It's only when it's when it's winning that the, the scale suddenly shoots up to the top, you know, so... Uh, they give it both ways now, don't they? There's a, a, I suppose it's both fire conversions, but they, yeah. give a, they give a percentage of winning. I think that's really nice that they do. Yeah, uh, yeah. A winning percentage and a drawing percentage. Is, yeah, is really yeah, always, always interesting to see what... Um, it gives you an idea about the character of the position, you know, whether a position's a, a safe, you know, playing only for two results uh, position or whether it's a, a wild one where it could go either way. Leela played c4 check, king g2, and then queen c6, attacking the pawn on c4, on e4 rather. So knight takes c4, um, and now quite a reasonably surprising move. Um, I think, um, yeah, queen e4 check is, um, is possible, but then white goes king g3. And um, while white's pretty safe, knight takes d6 is, uh, is coming in. At the very least, we're going to exchange off the, uh, um, uh, the light square bishops. And... I think this queen just gets in the way of, 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 of black counterplay, really, uh, strangely enough, you know. So um, what Leela did was uh, was extraordinary, but it really um, is not just about activating the queen and taking a pawn. It's about getting all the rest of your pieces active. And uh, well, after Leela's next couple of moves, um, we get um, we not only get the rook on b8 active, we also get the bishop on g7 active um, and we also get the rook on f8 active. What is this wondrous move? It's this move b5. And after knight d6, then b4. Worth pointing out a tactic here that um, um, you might think that rook d8 picks up a piece. Um, e4 to e5, depending on the knight, is impossible because of the pin. But there's this nice tactic, knight c8. 
And if um, rook takes d1, then knight e7 check, and white emerges a piece up. So that's um, nothing to do with it, but b4 is, um, is the great move from, uh, from, uh, from Lila. Um, really, you know, Benko style, just trying to uh, <coughs> open up the, um, uh, the queen side, give this rook a square, and also give uh, the bishop on, on g7 a diagonal. Yeah, that, that black bishop on g7 looks better than the white bishop on c1. Yeah, that's right. I mean, this, um, I mean, the white, you know, black gives away uh, two pawns, but uh, <clears throat> really transforms the, the relative activity of, um, uh, of the pieces. You know, it's uh, a really excellent idea. And of course, Leela has seen it, you know, quite a bit in advance, which is, uh, which is always the impressive thing. Um, so c4, rook d8, knight takes c8, this tactic again, rook takes d1, we've got uh, knight e7 check, rook b c8, queen c2, and rook d4. And, uh, well, I mean, definitely Leela's got its, uh, its pieces very active there. Not 100% easy to see how you increase the pressure, but, um, um, but for now, um, you know, White's got some, uh, some, some thinking to do. Um, King g3 was played. Um, yeah, Stockfish is trying to give, give back some, uh, a pull, maybe to exchange off queens. I mean, you can't go rook e4 because of bishop f3, which is uh, very annoying. Um, and queen e4. It's not not too bad, but my engines were not particularly happy with it. They uh, they really felt there that um, that uh, that yeah the white's position had been um, had been freed quite a bit. Um, rook d8 was played by uh, by Leela. Um, rook e1 just again expecting anticipating uh, an exchange on e4. Um, and now um, I think another great moment where I mean we had this lovely moment in the opening where. I guess um, Stockfish played its knights much more riskily than uh, than Leela, you know, supporting the same general plan, of course. But here the the, the paths really diverge. Um, Leela plays an extraordinary move, but uh, Stockfish was recommending an extraordinary move as well. Um, let's have a look at Stockfish's uh, recommendation. Um, that was knight e5. Um, amazing move. Um, so actually, you know, looking for stuff like knight d3 or rook d3 check. Um, if you uh, if you take on e5, then um, this is uh, very very dangerous for um, uh, for white. This king is quite exposed. I think I think it was rook takes e4. I'm trying to remember what what line it was. Rook e4, I think. We've got threats of um, you know of uh, rook takes h4 at times and all of that. Very hard for um, for uh, um, white to get the piece active. Rook d d4 is uh, was another line. That was it. Rook d d4 was another big threat in all these lines. So. Um, um, uh, bishop e3 was Stockfish's line. Rook e4, attacking the bishop on e3. Bishop, uh, queen b3, uh, queen c7, and uh, yeah, it's it's quite amazing. Which what's what is the what's the whole point of this? What what is um, uh, uh, Stockfish actually doing? Well, Stockfish is actually um, aiming at uh, the f4 pawn, um, going knight c4 and then rook f4. Um, Rook takes c4, this looks, this takes... Looking ferocious. It's looking ferocious, but somehow here as well, you know, I'm, I was sort of thinking, oh, you know, is, has it gone, gone past its peak, really? Because, okay. um, you know, but um, uh, the stockfish line was bishop d4 here. Rook takes g4, out of nowhere, knight e5, queen f7. And um, there's a lot of checks coming in. Queen f5, queen f3 if the queen moves off the third rank. And stockfish's line ends with the rook d4, queen f1, check. Queen F1 with a perpetual. This is uh, actually an engine game of, uh, of mine. Um, really quite amazing. And uh, I don't really know how a human would uh, come up with something like this. Um, I mean, it's so extraordinarily difficult to see that, um, that you're, um, you're changing the, um, the focus here to, to the pawn on F4. I mean, that's just, just incredible, really. I mean, I, I can't really fathom that in, uh, in this position. That was incredible tactics from, uh, from Stockfish. Leela played another incredible move as well, but um, much more positional. Actually, you can understand it you know, much better. And uh, that's, I guess that's always the attraction of the, the plans and the ideas that uh, the neural nets find in, uh, in chess games. And he played this move A5, which reminds me very much actually of, um, uh, of a game that we looked at from season 17, uh, a Samish, um, where again, Leela had sacrificed a couple of pawns and then spent uh, just you know at the height of the activity when you think you must be doing something dramatic, spent a couple of moves just uh, strengthening its position, giving itself another positional trump. And here, Blacks just wants to put the pawn onto a three, you know, and uh, 
and uh, and uh, and and gain that. And just um, you know, stock, Leela sees quite well that um, whatever Stockfish can do, it's nothing amazing, and uh, not really going to enormously improve its position in the meantime. So uh, c5 was played by um, uh, Stockfish, getting a, a possible square on c4 for the bishop. A4, Leela oblivious, carrying on with its plan, just. Uh, taking squares away from the, um, uh, from, from the white pieces on the queen. Queen side, for example, b3 is no longer available to the white queen. And looking at stuff like, uh, like a3. So um, b3 was what um, uh, Stockfish played in the game. Looks very risky opening up that g7a1 diagonal. Um, another engine games went uh, takes takes king g4, which was quite uh, interesting. Then rook d3, and all of a sudden the white king's just a little bit, um, uh, a little bit in danger there. Um, and one of my engine games um, went, uh, well, some amazing tactics from uh, from Stockfish went uh, h5 check, king h5 and rook g3, and all of a sudden the king was in big trouble with uh, queen e8 check coming in. Yeah, um, that king's pretty stuck there so far forward on the h file. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the tactics kept on being amazing, really. Um, um, it was the, this mixture, um, this mixture of um, uh, stopping the opponent's pieces from developing. So, for example, this rook dd3 stops bishop e3, and also then trying to get closer to the white king. And um, the uh, <laughs> the tactics were were amazing. Um, bishop f6 here. Just uh, giving some ideas of, uh, of bringing something to the H file. Maybe you know, King G7, Queen E8 to uh, to uh, to H8 or something like this. Um, F5 takes, and then this gorgeous move, uh, Rook G6. If King G6, we've got um, Bishop H4 check. Just put that on the board. That's quite nice. And um, if um, Queen takes F5, um, Rook G2 from Black, and it's getting very difficult because Queen E8 check is coming in. I mean, to be honest, you know, amazing tactics. I mean, it's really uh, uh, hard to... Um, um, the idea, you know, of h5 check rook g3 is, is not too difficult. I mean, I'm sure uh, that's uh, completely humanly possible. Uh, the subsequent tactics are, um, are very difficult to, uh, to get a grip. Simply because it's not a direct attack. You're, you know, you're, you're alternating, restricting, and then attacking. You know, and that's always very difficult to... Um, um, well, very difficult to calculate precisely as a human. You know, you can miss... Uh, um, a little check from from somewhere, and uh, you know, and then suddenly it's game over. But just goes to show, I think, the danger that's uh, that's still in in White's position there. So b3 was played by a uh, stockfish, a3. So Leela's got its um, its advanced pawn, its fawn pawn, as uh, the YouTuber King's says. King's Crusher yeah. says it. That's right, yeah. Trifon Gabriel, and um, uh, e5 from uh, from stockfish. So. Um, very desirable position. Yeah, you know, of course, Stockfish had seen the uh, the tactics coming up now, um, but I think it just sort of shows that you know Stockfish feels it has to um, to stimulate these tactics now and uh, and force a decision because um, it doesn't really see any other way to uh, to improve its position. Um, so Knight takes e5. Um, again, F takes c5 is way too dangerous. Bishop e5 check, King h3. We can go Rook d3 check and. Uh, Bishop d3 allows uh, queen f3 mate. So uh, very, very dangerous. But that wasn't, uh, Stockfish wasn't worried about that. Bishop e3 was the idea. Dragging the knight away from g4 gives the bishop on e3 a square. And, you know, white can uh, can develop there. Rook d3, attacking the uh, the bishop on e3. Bishop h5, only move uh, to uh, to give some protection to the e3 uh, bishop and... Uh, and um, and also keep control of the f3 square as well. Very important. Otherwise, queen f3 check could come in. So rook c3, queen f, queen g2, and queen c5. Queen e4. Can't be taken because of the pin. Exactly. And then rook d3, increasing the pin. It's amazing how um, you know how active the uh, the black uh, major pieces have got. You know, they're all looking towards the d file, and now they're um, they're all on the third rank. Um, king f2. And um, you do wonder just for a moment, oh, you know, is this, uh, has, um, has Leela sort of uh, run out of steam here? But there is a tactic. It's rook takes e3, rook takes takes, and knight g4 check. Bishop g4 and bishop d4, pinning the queen to the king. And um, if there was any justice in the world, this would be winning. But of course, uh, 
um, it's not quite because after bishop e6 we go rook e1 um, well h5 was played um, I'll just show uh, bishop e3 rook e3 um, and this position is actually um, um, drawn um, the problem is, is that if black plays queen c2 then rook e2 covers very easily and there's no other real weakness that white has and just one weakness is never going to be enough to um, uh, you know to force out the um, uh, um, well, to, to break up the white position and break the defensive structure. So, um, actually, I mean, I'm sure with uh, with black, I'd be slightly worried about uh, about losing this, to be honest, in a in a quick play finish. But uh, in principle, um, black's queen is active enough to uh, to be able to um, uh, to be able to give perpetuals. And um, well, the game continued. I'm not not going to show it now because the game continued for a very long time. I could have taken the pawn in h4, but could always do it. And uh, the black queen ended up giving an awful lot of checks and eventually the, the game was drawn. So there we are. That was the uh, the game. Well, the two games, really. Um, it's uh, I think it was a very, very interesting, really interesting games. And uh, um, I thought this concept of... Um, I thought it was very interesting how both Leela and Stockfish had pretty much the same idea of what needed to be done in the opening, but went about it in... You know, a different way. I think Stockfish put its knights much more risky positions, and uh, Leela much more solid, and uh, you know, trying to keep control. Um, I was very impressed with this idea of Leela. You know, blocking uh, up the king side in this way definitely a, a theme to remember. Um, and then um, again, yeah, you know, very nice uh, switch of plans from Stockfish, and then a very nice um, double pawn sacrifice from uh, from Leela here. Really very impressed with that. And uh, so, um, yeah, so typical of the NNs, you know, to uh, not to worry about material too much, but really to see, you know, how much am I increasing the, uh, the, the activity of my own pieces and also relative to, you know, to White's pieces by doing this. And of course, by playing B5 to B4, you're, you know, the bishop on G7, as Natasha pointed out, is getting way, way more active than the bishop on C1. And that's worth material, you know, even two pawns. Um, almost three pawns, really, because, you know, white can also grab this pawn at, um, at any moment as well. So, um, yeah, really great game. Uh, I mean, there have been some, uh, some wonderful games in, uh, in this uh, super final. I think uh, this morning it was a three point lead, 34 to 31, after um, Leela had played an absolutely fantastic queen sacrifice, positional queen sacrifice for, uh, for two pieces after an earlier long-term pawn sacrifice so um yeah i mean stockfish is uh, is definitely on top definitely winning more of its kind of positions and uh, mm. and defending it's, it's kind of varied it's been fluctuating between a one point lead and a five point lead exactly yeah uh, yeah over the last few days yeah, yeah no it's yeah, been at the yeah. middle a three point lead at the moment yeah very very it's exciting like halfway yeah game 63 64 somewhere around there so uh yeah, I mean, it's still very exciting. It still could go either way. I mean, in general, you've got to say, uh, you know, Stockfish is uh, is definitely on top of the moment, has played some absolutely phenomenal combinations. Uh, well, Game 8, uh, hopefully you've seen that one uh, of our video, uh, uh, one of our previous videos, was quite exceptional. Um, but Leela's played some good games too, you know, and, uh, and uh, yeah, you know, it could still go, uh, still go either way. In general, you're thinking Stockfish could edge it, but you never know. So, um, anyway, keep watching our channel for... Uh, we're going to try and do as many as possible of these uh, wonderful games. Keep watching the TCC as well, you know, um, because uh, that's uh, um, just another 35 games to go, you know, so uh, definitely worth uh, catching the end because it should be an exciting finish. And otherwise, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. And uh, otherwise, if you haven't seen our book Game Changer. It's but, a great read. Yes, it is a great read. Do take a look at it. And otherwise, keep well, keep safe. And see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.